I'm going to begin by asking, I mean, this film deals with really big themes. I mean, we look into things like kind of loneliness and homelessness and, and, and sort of domestic abuse and stuff like that, but the, it also maintains quite an optimistic tone. I was wondering if that was quite a challenge to, to keep that sense of hope in a film that is ultimately dealing with quite, quite difficult things and sort of challenging themes as well. Um, it's, uh, I think the, the, the humour and the lightness is a way to approach these uh, serious subjects. And there are moments at, at, in the film where things look pretty hopeless for the characters. Uh, but you know you can have that happen and have the scenes be emotional because you end up in a better place than where you started. And uh, I actually think that now the world sometimes looks so dark that the answer is to come to uh, not just do something that's superficial, but actually address some of these subject matters, but do it in a way where you um, show that there is compassion and love and hope. Because I mean, I come from London, where we're probably people just don't like talking to strangers. It's that there's a real kind of if you sit on the tube and anyone sort of dares speak to you, it's kind of like the worst thing that's ever happened. But do you, I'm assuming, obviously, having made this movie, you must believe in the kind of in the kindness of strangers and this the notion, I guess, that you know, our, our one of our next best friends or partners is someone we just haven't met yet. But, but actually the tube is an example of fantastic coexistence. It's everybody's tube. I, as you know, I've worked with uh, Stephen Woolley on Their Finest and he loves the tube as a symbol of uh, democracy and uh, how strangers can coexist uh, underground. Um, um, so, I mean, London is also an example of uh, a place where there is not as much prejudice as in many other places of the world, where there is lots of tolerance and um, survival skills and uh, kindness. People are super polite in England. Um, and you experience lots of warmth in unexpected places. Because mm. obviously, I mean, London, like New York, just lends itself so perfectly to, to the kind of cinematic landscape. And in this movie, New York is, is, is a great setting for this film. Um, obviously, uh, as you're looking at this from a kind of a foreigner's point of view, a foreigner's perspective, almost like a tourist in New York, and a lot of the characters uh, are come from other places or are visiting New York or have moved to New York. Do you think in some ways they're challenging challen challen your vision of, of America through, do you think yeah, you've channeled your vision of America through the characters in this movie? Uh, it's not. It's not quite my vision of uh, America. It's more those people on in that during that winter in that city, uh, because I know first of all New York is very, not very typical for America. It's more at an arena that is truly international, where you have uh, all these different nations meet and also at a cast from different parts of the world. So. It's more that it's everybody's capital or a place where you can juxtapose great wealth and, and uh, the opposite in such a, an intense uh, cocktail and such a, a beautiful uh, cinematic landscape. Um, but the film could take place in London, it could take place in Paris, um, uh, except it, uh, America now is uh, there is a bit less hope, I think, than we still have, at least in some parts of Europe. And, and uh, <laughs> also, regarding the, the cast, I mean, you've got sort of Zoe, Andrea, Tahar, Bill. I mean, it's quite an incredible cast. You must have been so thrilled. And, and just from a director's point of view, I mean, it must make your job so much easier when you're leaving these characters in the hands of such brilliant actors. It is a lot easier. And, uh, and also because I, I like what they do. I've written the script, so you would think that I have a much more... Um, a strict idea of how the part should be played, but that's not the case. I like their versions of it, and uh, and also I don't, I haven't had the feeling that I had a, a writer I had to defend, uh, which I sometimes do with the UK films I've made, four films uh, back to back in the UK, where I feel that part of my job is to ensure that the writer's script gets through the film machine and onto screen and and uh, survives the process. But here I have been. Uh, more ready to open up and get their input because they have a different experience that I need for the film, especially the American point of view. Because yeah. I was reading that uh, you did write the mind, um, the character for with Bill, not an yeah. I in mind. Uh, what does that change about the way you write a character? If you're writing character <laughs> that could belong to anyone, or if you're writing character that's specifically for an actor, how, how, how does that change the way you approach the, the crafting of that role? 
I'm writing it with really with this. I would, I'm hoping Bill likes that he is and will understand why I think the characters should say exactly that at that moment. Um, it feels more like um, giving him gifts, uh, things that he can. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's telling the story via his very uh, specific skills and his timing and his humor. Um, so it's just fun. He's really inspirational, and I know I'm not the only one who thinks so. But he also uh, there are things you know that he won't do because they're not good. So in that sense, you there are things that you don't write where you already censor yourself because you know he's it's not going to pass the the Bill Nye test. <laughs> so uh, yeah, he's um, he's a great gift for the film. I'm really glad he is part of it because he adds a tonality that is um, very warm. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Just finally, before I go, I was just wondering if you probably might not remember, but I was just wondering what's the, the kindest thing a stranger has ever done to, for you? Ah, oh, it's nice. Um, last night, all these people who just come up to me and tell me what the film made them feel. And um, But I think the bigger, uh, more serious points in life where you are in a hospital at 4 a.m. in the morning because something really awful has happened and all of a sudden there are these people in white dresses, uh, outfits that you have never met before and they understand and help uh, uh, and it feels like you've known them for 20 years, people you only meet for those five minutes where they are of huge, huge help. I really admire that, and you see it in the film, Andrea Riceboro's part uh, as a, an ER nurse who just goes out of her way to an extreme that it, she can't take it anymore. Yeah. Thanks so much for your time, so much appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey, hey you guys! <laughs> hey you guys! <laughs> Hey, that's what they all say. Hey, you guys! Hey!